Eva Banda was born in 1840 in Missouri. And her husband, Amher Jackson, moved to Missouri. And they decided to travel to California via wagon train. They ended up in the Riego area, just north of Baseline Road. And Henry, their firstborn son, was a year and a half old, and he passed away. And since there was no cemeteries in the area, they decided to put him in the schoolhouse park, which was an acre of land that was donated by the Fidimit family for the schoolhouse. So Henry Jackson was the first one buried in this cemetery. And a few years later, Aletha, again, pregnant with her youngest child, Lee, succumbed right after childbirth. Lee lived a few months later, and then he also passed on. So Aletha is buried here with her two sons, her third born and her youngest son. This uh, project is a culmination of uh, several years of effort between the cooperation of Sun City Roseville and the city of Roseville, and we are very grateful uh, for those uh, in charge at the city. Uh, this project started uh, three or four years ago with the uh, uh, installation of this sound wall uh, over here along Fidiment. At that point, it really became obvious that we had a real uh, nice gem here. And we wanted to really incorporate it and make it part of our community. It took a couple years uh, with discussions with the city, uh, but under uh, Mayor uh, uh, Pauline Ricucci's uh, council, we were able to bring together a 30-year lease, $1 a year, in which we took over care of the park. Uh, in exchange for them giving up some obligations that we had committed uh, when the community was first uh, put into, uh, into place. So those concessions by the city largely uh, paid for the uh, one-time upgrade that you have seen. Uh, if, if you notice as you walk around the park, and I'll uh, get into some other comments uh, uh, shortly, but you'll see that the landscape uh, effort on either end of the park, uh, plus the general uh, trimming and whatnot that we've done. So, uh, Before I get too far adrift, uh, I wanted to uh, introduce uh, Jean Clark, your board president. Uh, she has a few comments. Thank you, Earl. Wow, this is Sun City, and this reminds me of the early Del Webb days when we all came out, and we had music, and we had food, and everybody was getting together, and I, I think it's terrific to see everyone out here this morning. So I'd like to welcome you over uh, here today for this long-anticipated uh, accomplishment that we've finally come to, being able to maintain the park and use it more uh, readily than we have in the past. I'd like to thank the city people who are here today. We have Mayor Pauline Ricucci, and well, we would really like to thank all these city people who have been very instrumental in helping us uh, this project come to fruition so that we could take over the park. I'd also like to thank uh, our own staff. Thank you, Jean. It's nice to be here. It's nice to see so many people here. Uh, I haven't seen so many golf carts in one place except playing golf, but this is really nice. And bicycles and people walking here, so it's, and it's a wonderful day to be here. I just want to mention just a couple things, like our 
our schoolhouse park here started many, many years ago. And the reason it started is because in the early 1900s, this was a farming area. And the farmers felt that they needed to have a school, and they built a little school here. And here it was high on the hill, and it was south of the creek. And due to the beautiful nature of the site of this park, that, and it's still the intent to keep the park as a passive site, and walking trails and picnic areas and open space. And those early settlers, like I mentioned, in this farm village, uh, had many families. And there are there's a, a mother and two small children that are buried here at this site. So it has a lot of a lot of history of of um, of early early Roseville and Placer County. What national military park was the site of the largest Civil War battle ever waged in the Western Hemisphere? Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Gettysburg is correct. But number eight. The tallest man-made monument is displayed at the Jefferson Memorial Expansion National Park. Um, name the monument and which state it's located in. Oh. oh, Rex. Rex. I believe Mr. Clark had his hand up. The St. Louis Arch in Missouri. No? Okay, well, it's partially correct. That's actually not the official name of the monument, but oh. I think we can give it to you. It is, it is the Gateway Arch, Gateway Arch, and it's located in St. Louis, Missouri, and it's 630 close, feet tall. Close enough. Very good. Um, which national park has over 9 million visitors per year, the most of any other national park in the country? Somebody, it is the Great Smoky Mountain National Park that's located in Tennessee and North Carolina. Wow. Followed by number two, which is the Grand Canyon. Number three is Yosemite, and, other, and number four is Yellowstone. Okay, the last three questions are, the long, uh, number 15, the longest reservoir in the United States uh, measures 186 miles long, and it is, um, and it's Lake Powell, and is located in the Glen Canyon National Park. What state is Lake Powell located in? Go ahead. Well, it, well doesn't it, it's in two states, yeah. isn't it? Utah and Nevada. Um, it only actually registered in one state, but it is Utah. You're correct. The Wright Brothers National Memorial commemorates the first successful airplane flights in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December 17, 1903. Another National Park unit located in the city where Orville was born preserves the Wright Cycle Company, their flying school, and other attractions. Can you name this Midwestern city? Isla? It's Dayton. It is Dayton. Very good. Oh. Dayton, Ohio. Oh. Woo!